In this video, we're going to be transforming this to this. Hey guys, Jonathan here and we're back in the workshop this week and as you can see we've still got a fair amount of mess and we've got a fair amount of tools that don't have a permanent home. Last week we built this workbench which is a big improvement in the space. We've managed to get a bit of our equipment and some of our tools in there but all of the rest of it we're hoping to get into a French cleat system on this wall. So in this video we're going to be building some really simple cost effective tool panels that are going to be mounted on a French cleat on this wall. But the first thing to do is get all of this mess tidied up. The next part of the project is to get these lengths of pine strip wood uh, mounted on this wall. And we've got a cut of 45 degree on the back. Uh, we're going to have four rails basically. The top one will have the 45 for the French cleat. And then the bottom one will just mean that the, the tool frames are going to be held square. So we just need two more lengths of this strip wood, which we'll have to grab from B&Q. And then the main part of this project is these tool frames. So we could build them, and I've kind of looked at the idea of building them, but we're going to have about possibly 8 to 12 tool frames on this wall, and it's going to be a fair job for me to build all of those. And we think, you know, we like showing little novel ways, little novel hacks, so we're going to head to Ikea and we've got an idea of something that could be quite clever. Right, so we've got everything we need. Uh, next job is to go and cut a 45 degree on the back of these and then we can mount them to the wall. Hey guys, have you subscribed to the channel yet? If not, it'd really help us out if you click that subscribe button and click the little notification bell and then you'll get a notification next time we put a video live. But that being said, let's get back to it. Right, so our French cleat wall, our tool wall, is gonna be built around these Santa head frames from Ikea that we picked up. We bought 14 of these. It would probably be slightly cheaper to buy the timber and put these together. I mean, this is 10 pounds each. Um, but the time, the hours that we'd have to put into it would probably mean these are cheaper. And for those who aren't familiar with what a French cleat is, I'll draw it up quickly. So if this is our wall, we're going to be attaching a piece of strip wood with a 45 degree angle facing outwards. And we've already cut that. Um, and then we're going to be having our picture frames. And on the back of the picture frame, we're going to be mounting a piece of strip wood with a opposite, equal and opposite 45 degree angle. So they'll be able to hook straight on the wall. So all we have to do now is find the studs and screw these to the wall nice and level and nice and centrally and then we can look at doing our picture frames. Right, so that is all of the strip wood mounted on the wall. We've got the two French cleats and then we've got the kind of the just spacer mounted. And I think we've done really, really well there to get solid fixing all the way across the wall. They're definitely not going anywhere. Um, so the next thing is we've got 14 of these from Ikea, these uh, picture frames. And we've, we've had a look at them and the back panel is just a little bit weaker than we need it to be. So we're gonna utilize the outside frame but we're going to be cutting down some 9 mil MDF panels. We can basically take this thin backer out, put a solid piece in the back. We can then just put three pins on each edge. So what we end up with is a really quick and easy, but a really solid tool frame. And this will fit a piece of 50 mil foam in it. And then obviously we'll put a French cleat on the back and then it can mount on this wall. And we've got space for like I say, seven and seven. So 14 to do, let's get the other 13 done. Right. 
Right, so that's all 14 of them done, and they're all, they've all come out really solid. Um, so the next job, we made some uh, 45 degree rail yesterday when we made the rails for the wall. So we've just got to cut them down into about 30 centimetre lengths. There's a slight variance in the rails, because I cut them freehand with a circular saw, and then we planed them. So there's a slight variance there. There's also a slight variance in the cleats. So rather than putting the cleats on on the bench and hoping they're gonna be square, we're doing them on the wall. So all I did was uh, put the cleats on, put the frame in position, put one screw in, and that way you can pivot it on that one screw. Pivot! And just kind of get it perfectly square. Drop the other screw in, and then we've got the pivot. Pivot! <laughs> I've got pivot on the mind. Pivot! Then you can put the, uh, the cleat exactly where you need it to get it perfectly square and level. So that's the first one done, and now all of the other ones will be uh, square to that one. So let's get the other 13 done. So that is all 14 of the tool frames up on the wall. It's a really effective looking wall that, and they look kind of like one big old unit mounted on the wall, but they are all individually mounted. So they all come down nice and easy. You just have to give it a little bit of a, a push to get it off the wall. Shows how solid they are, but they're all individually mounted. So we can take them down, organize the tools in foam and then put them back up again. So I think that's a really, Effective. I mean, I love the French cleat system. I've seen loads of videos on YouTube of people doing French cleat systems. And I just always wanted to do one. So I think as a first go, that, I'm really pleased with that, to be honest. I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, how we could have improved it, how we could make this possibly better. And I'd love to see what you guys think about using these IKEA picture frames as tool frames. They work out at about 14 pound each with the timber and the, a little bit of the, the French cleat on the back. So about 14 pound a frame. And now all we need to do is add the tools. So cutting all of the tools in, we're gonna be covering in part two of this video. So stay tuned for that or click below. We may have already released it by the time you're watching this video. Uh, but here's a little teaser of what that looks like. So yeah, let's get all the tools out. We're gonna be laying out all of the foam inserts and figuring out what's gonna be going in them. And then it'll be time to cut some foam. Not only is it really useful, it also makes a pretty awesome backdrop. Right, so now we've finally got the wall done, we can cut some foam, and we're gonna be starting with this top center tool panel here. Uh, and we have numbered all of these, just to make it a little bit easier, taking them up and down off the wall, we, we're gonna know they're gonna go back in the right spot. Um, so we've numbered them all. Um, and all we need to do is these, these pieces of foam are from our website, it's custom size. 34 centimeter by 34 centimeter, 50 mil red. So you can get these on the website, shadowfoam.com in any size you need. And we can push this straight into the frame and we've got a little bit of a, a lip to hold the foam in. So we're not even gonna glue this in because the way that these IKEA frames are, they have like two mil lip all the way around the edge and the foam will sit just below it. So you end up with a really nice finish. And obviously you can't see any of the red and now we've printed off our shadow foam shield and we're just gonna be centering up that in the frame. And then we're gonna be cutting all the way through and peeling back this shield shape. And that should leave us the SF in black and then the outer space in black. And then that'll be the first panel. We're gonna be cutting a logo. So we've printed off our template and then we've got one of our cutting kits. So these cutting kits you can buy separately, but they do come free with orders over 50 pounds. And in these kits, you've got everything you need to be able to cut shadow foam. Anti-cut gloves, we've got some fantastic elastic rubber glue. So this is to repair any mistakes you might make on the way. You can just use this flexible repair glue and that way you can go again. We've also got the cutting instructions talking you through exactly what I'm gonna be telling you now. We've also got a branded shadow foam sticker We've got one of our scalpels and then a packet of five blades. So as I said, it's everything you need to get going with shadow foam. But the first thing we need to do is make sure that this shield is smack bang in the middle, ready for cutting. So we're just gonna measure the points of the shield. It's perfect, so that's where the shield wants to be cut. So now all we need to do is get our anti-cut gloves on. Never cut foam without these on, these are um, saviors for little nips and cuts on your hands. So you definitely need the anti-cut gloves on. And then you wanna use a small little 
pair of pliers or big pliers and just grip the back of the blade and then you just slide it on like that. So once you've got your blade on and we've got the shield exactly where we want it to go, we just put some light pressure on it. We don't want it to move, but we don't want to distort the foam. And we literally just, we use it as a template and we just, we're just cutting through the paper. We're not worried about the foam. The foam will naturally score. We're gonna go nice and steady. We're not worried about how deep we cut into the foam. We can come back in a minute and do that. So when we've cut all the way around the, uh, the logo or obviously the shield that we're doing here, you can pull that away. Make sure that the, the centerpiece doesn't move. And then now we're doing the exact same thing, but with the letters. And we'll start with this top shape here. Now you can tape this down. The problem is that the tape is just another layer to cut, but it depends how complicated the logo. If this was a really complicated logo with lots of letters, lots of detail, I would tape it down. Right, so that's all of the shapes cut out. So now we can remove this and we can just take the gloves off and we can work our way around the shape and make sure we've managed to cut all the way around. And you can see that if I don't put any pressure on the foam, you can't even see where I've cut. But as soon as you press down, you can see that we've we've cut all the shapes out and I'm just checking now we've managed to get all the way around so I'll put the gloves back on and now what we want to do is make that cut a little bit deeper we want to go at least because I'm looking to peel back the five mil black layer we want to go at least eight mil something like that so we've, we've definitely gone clear past the black layer so it'll peel out so we're just trace cutting around making sure that it's at least five to eight mil all the way around because what we don't want it to do is tear right so that is all the cutting done so we've fully cut around the shield shape and the letters so now the last thing to do is to peel out the foam so to peel it all you want to do is find a nice starting point like a corner point like this and then we're just looking to force our fingers underneath and just start peeling that top you can see straight away it's, it's pulling pulling away and you don't want to be grabbing it at a corner and lifting it, you want to be just tracking along behind it. And here, where we've got a piece of foam that we want to stay in, we just want to press on that so that doesn't try and lift out. We want to just be lifting up the foam around it. And there we have it, that's how you cut and peel shadow foam. And that's how you do a logo, which I think is a pretty um, effective way to personalize a project. It's great if you're trying to fill up a space or you just want to customize something, you know, you can just print off a template, cut around it, and you can get that really great contrast. I think the Shadow Foam Shield looks fab in there. Let us know in the comments what you think or what logos you'd want to see cut in foam. Um, but yeah, we'll get that on the wall. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. We've got 13 more of these tool trays to put tools in but we're gonna be doing all of that in our next video. So if you've not subscribed already, you don't wanna miss this. So click the subscribe button, it really helps us out. And if you click the notification bell, that you'll get a little notification when this, this video goes live. So thanks very much for watching the video and we'll see you next time.